humble little studio where tonight uh, we're going to take on a watercolor challenge of my own making. We're going to be painting a flamingo. Uh, hello to everybody who's joined early. We've got a few coming in here. Tracy, Patty, Natalie, uh, Liza is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's jump in to it. There we go. You can see my desktop. Uh, I've got this out here because this evening, once again, you can see it on my right-hand side over here. I'm using my Daniel Smith paints uh, instead of my normal uh, M. Graham paints. And here's the colors that I'm going to be using. I'm going to try to call these out as I, as I use them. But if anybody needs to hear what they are, please just shout it out, and I'm happy to tell you. If you want me to go through these all at some point, I'm happy to do that too. So here's the image that I have chosen way up there. I've got it drawn out uh, down here, and we're going to jump into it. Like I said, I'm using my Daniel Smith paints over here. Um, they're nice. I like them. I don't like them quite as much as my M. Grams, but I do like them. They're very nice, and I think they're going to do a great job with this. I've got a number of reds over here. And some orangey colors and some nice beautiful yellows over here. In fact, I think I'm going to turn this around um, this way. Maybe like that. And then I can get those colors closer to me a little bit. And uh, let's see. What else do we need to talk about before I get started? The paper that I'm using, always something I would ask about, is... Uh, Fabriano Studio paper, same paper I've been using for a while. Now I've got some, <laughs> I've got some pinks and uh, oranges and uh, magentas and whatnot on my palette already from last month's uh, painting or whatever else we painted that was pink. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, so I'm just going to mix some of these in and that's going to help with uh, that base coat. I'm going to make sure I get this a nice orangey uh, pink color. Uh, we've got a few people coming in. A few people. Let's see what it says. Patty says, hello all. First time I've caught a live at the beginning. Well, welcome. Glad you are here. Uh, Eliza's already got a question. I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> um... Let's see, let's see, what is your question, Liza? Hello, Osudike is here, Tracy is here, Natalie's here, Susie is here, um, do, do, do. Cheryl is here from Virginia, hello, hello, wow, everybody <laughs> is here. It's fantastic to see so many people here. All right, uh, I'm going to try to uh, watch what's going on up there and, and watch for the question. Um, and when it comes in, I'll try to answer it. If it's not there, somebody please let me know. I'm going to put on a very light layer of color here. Like I said, this is... Looks to me like there's some cyan in here. There's, I know there's a bit of this orange in there because I've been putting it in. Uh, or vermilion, I should say. This vermilion... I'm going to mix my colors a little bit here. Uh, and just to just to get a nice base layer of paint on here. Suzuki <laughs> says same motley crew as we have here every week. That's okay, not a motley crew, a fantastic crew. I really I, I <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it today because I didn't go to work today. But I come home from work, and my wife often will say, "Are you going to do a live show today? You're, you look so tired. You're talking about how tired you are. I don't know if you want to do the show today." And I go, "Ah, yeah. You know what? I don't want to. I don't know if I want to do the show." And then she goes, "Yeah, but remember, you always feel so good afterwards. Everybody, you always come away in such a good, uh, a, such a good mood." And I do because I love doing this show with you guys. I say it at the end of every show, you guys make this uh, a fantastic Wednesday for me. It's a wonderful way to end my Wednesday, and if I couldn't do, I really would miss it. <laughs> Let's see. Welcome to anyone new. Welcome to everyone new. 
Uh, yes. Oh, Michelle Mills is here from the UK. Wow. Michelle, that's a long way. Thank you for joining. Like Natalie and Liza say, if you have any questions, throw them out there. I love answering questions. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions about myself. I'm happy to answer questions about paint, paper, brushes. I'm happy to answer questions about art in general. I'm happy to answer questions about my art. If I'm able to, I'll answer questions about other people's art. Um, <laughs> brush that was. What brush is this? Um, Eliza, are you asking what brush this is? This is, this is, I'm going to use mostly these brushes. These are my King Art brushes. I'll tell the story. I, I just, I saw an ad for these and I went, well, I do kind of need a, a brush that's not an animal hair brush. Whoops, where's it at? And so... I think you can see it here. Come on. There it is. So I bought these from King Art. I got a whole set of them. I got what I thought was a pretty good deal on them. Uh, I got eight brushes for roughly... Uh, roughly $40 or so with, with shipping. I don't know. It was a while ago, so I don't know the exact price. Um... But I actually, I cut the set in half, and I've been using um, half of the set. What I did was, every time there was a big brush, I put one over here, and one over here, and one over there. And was the next size, I put one over here, and one over there. And the next size, I put one over here, and one over there. And pretty soon, I had the whole set divided up, and I've been using half the set, and I kind of feel as though whenever... I need to. I've got a whole fresh new set of brushes that I can pull out and utilize. So uh, I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good deal to get this. I don't want, I feel like my paint has gotten a bit uh, darker here, a bit more saturated than I really want. If it did, we'll deal with it. Um, we'll, kind of, we'll kind of pivot, but I wanted to put a light layer on here. My nemesis is too much pigment. <laughs> I do it from time to time. We all probably do it from time to time. I was only thinking of the image that I've got in the corner up there. Where's it at? Up there. There's some really light areas uh, in that image, and I don't want to get it too dark. But if it goes a bit dark, then we'll just pivot and we'll do it slightly differently. I don't think it'll be a big deal. We'll figure it out and we'll we'll make it right. Holy cow, there's a lot going on in chat. Just give me one second. Cool. I've got my first, well, most of my first layer on. I got a little bit up here. I don't want to go back and do a little bit back here. Uh for fear I'm gonna make a bigger bloom here than I've kind of already made. But I kind of do like that bloom that's there right now. So while I'm waiting here, let's Let's take a look at the chat. Uh, curious if there was a reason for switching to Daniel Smith for this painting. Patty, great question. There is. <laughs> the reason is I have all of these uh, wonderful colors in this set. Uh, I use quinacridone rose in my other set and pyrrole red. And they're really bright and fiery. But in here, if I want to do something a little a little brighter with a little more of a pop, I can do that. I've got Pyrol Scarlet, Pyrol Scarlet, and Organic Vermilion, which mixed with probably quinacridone, quinacridone rose make this lovely pinkish orange color. Um, and I've got all of these uh, yellows that I can do. If you look on the the the, the neck, if you could re if you could zoom in on that. There really is quite a bit of yellow on the neck of, of this bird. Um, so uh, it's only I only did this because of the colors that I have in this set that I don't typically have on my, my regular set. 
that's the only reason but I <laughs> if I if I could I would buy the other I would buy them all in the M gram set and use those let's see um boop, boop, boop. Liza you're asking about mold contamination I put it in caps above all right Liza let me look what you said about mold contamination in caps above I don't see um I see hello I have a question Liza Liza I don't see it in all caps above I'm sorry about that that might just be me Um, let's see, do, do, Michelle says, been following for a while, but first time caught live, it's just going 2 a.m. here, holy cow, what are you doing up, <laughs> Michelle, thank you for making the sacrifice of some sleep, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't sleep at 2 a.m. normally, but wow, that is late, thank you for joining, it's great to have you here, let's see, Liza, Susie says, Liza, you don't see the question either, <laughs> Michelle, it sounds like you sleep or don't sleep like I do. Yes. Oh, and Liza says, here's your question. If I touch a wet brush to a tube, can I possibly set myself up for mold contamination of my tube? You could. So, mold contamination is tough. And... I, it's going to depend a lot upon where you live, of course. I live in not the driest place in the world, and I always thought that I would get more mold contamination than I do. Uh, but I, in, in my pallets, don't close totally up. I do have one that is a Majello, Mahayo, I don't know, Magello. I don't know how you say it travel paint set that totally seals all the way up uh i've put wet paint in there and tightened it up after after having used it and here i've i haven't had a problem with mold contamination so i don't have the experience um liza to tell you but in general yes anytime you take the the cap off of your paint and then put it back you do risk um, mold contamination unless mold is really 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 bad though you should be able to um, squeeze out just a little bit take the end off just with the end off and get rid of that and it shouldn't hurt the rest of your paint if it does happen on your paints um, you should be able to wipe it off you might have to wipe several times to get it off and then and then rinse really good and get rid of it um, so it doesn't come back and then letting your paints dry fully before you close them up should help with that. Um, let's see. Natalie says, you, you've you seen artists watch from tube and, and you've never had a problem with it, but you don't do it very often. I've, I've, I've had tubes open and used tubes. And like I said, I put my paints away wet from time to time. Uh, and I haven't had problems with it. Um, you touch the inside of your tube with a wet brush. Michael is stuck a wet brush into a tube. I've done it. I've done it with this. I put wet brushes into this. Uh, and I haven't had too many problems with it. Okay. Um, uh, it's a great question, Liza. Um, I... I I just, I don't have the, I, it's not that I'm not willing or able to answer, I guess it's not really able to answer it. I haven't had the issue. Um, and I think, I, I just, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to best to answer that question. That's a great question. Let's see, I'm going to put some of the same color paint kind of on this guy's bill i'm gonna move forward i'm not I'm, i hope that liza you don't think i'm trying to dodge it i just i don't know i haven't i haven't had that problem 
um, but I, I know that drying your paints should help and I, I don't know about the tube. I haven't. I, I personally haven't had the problem in a tube before. Now I'm going to be worried about it. <laughs> now I'm going to go, oh no, I can't do that. I'm potentially going to get... Actually, that's probably not true. I'll still, I'll still dip my brush into there. I just won't worry about it too much. I'll be the guinea pig for you. If you see mine <laughs> getting moldy, I'll let you know. Let's see, I'm just looking up here to see where there's a little bit of color on his bill, beak, bill, bill, bill beak, on his beak. You think he's a beak? <laughs> I don't think you'll contaminate a whole tube. Liza, the contamination would stay to an open air area, an open area in there. It won't, I don't think it'll um, work its way down. I think you're safe from that. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of, I'm going to get a little bit of this blue that we had used before. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush. This is where, <laughs> this is where <laughs> it's always, it's fun and hard for me. Liza asks me a question that I don't have a set stock answer for. <laughs> and I've got to think and paint at the same time. <laughs> it's just sometimes difficult. Why do I have two things drawn here? Why well, don't know, how did I draw this like this? I think I missed part of this. That's okay. We'll come back and we'll clean that up. Liza challenging me to <laughs> to paint and uh, paint and talk and think at the same time. Let's see, I'm going to get some of this beautiful purple in there. Liza, Susie, I just squeeze sometimes and I just want a tiny swatch. I hate the dabs on my palette. They just sit there. Ah, I get that. You feel like when you do that little dab on your palette... And it just sits there. You, you feel like you're wasting the paint a little bit. I don't know if that's true. I don't know that you're wasting the paint, but sometimes you feel like it. Oh, no. I don't, what am I going to do with this uh, little dab of paint? I'm putting a little purple in here. I want to add some, a little bit of color to this guy. I want to find some ways to add some color to this guy. So I don't know... I'm going to pick this up, right? He's got this white skin up by his eye up here, and I want to add a little bit. So I added a little bit of purple that was on our pa uh, on my palette up there, just so you can see that a little bit. And I think I need to pull this. Well, I've got to wait for that for just a second. Okay. And this doesn't matter because this is going to be black here anyway. So we're good with that. But this bothers me how I drew that. I don't know why I did that. Let's see. I squeeze all my tubes into half pans uh, to add to your video. And Natalie, you say, <laughs> you, spend, you do all of your tubes all at once? Holy cow. Uh, Patty, you had mold in a dry environment. Um... <laughs> Suduke say, don't don't talk mold, talk new paint colors for me to buy. <laughs> Suduke, don't you <laughs> didn't you get enough uh last time? <laughs> new paint colors. Have you bought all the ones we talked about last time? New viewers will find out we we often talk new paint colors and then we all decide we should all go out and buy all those colors. Because all those colors are really nice. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's an addiction. We probably all ought to go to some kind of twelve step program for buying different colors. But we feel like we need to. <laughs> Oh, 
Let's see. Um, I don't know. Everybody's still talking. I squeeze all my teeth. See, I, I can't see. I can go broke. <laughs> um, I just bought a beautiful little Lucas 24 fan set. So vibrant and responsive um, to what I want to do. Okay. Lucas Paints. Uh, that's another brand that I've never used. What makes Lucas Paints special? What do you like about those Lucas Paints, Michelle? You realize that you're a color addict. <laughs> I get it. I get being a color addict. Um, let's see. Okay, so I've got some dryness down here. While... <laughs> so you can so true you can never have enough paint that's true totally true okay while uh while we're all thinking about paints and what what paints we want and what paints we have um the the body of this bird is just cool to the touch so it means it's drying out it's probably just dry enough um uh, i wish i could point on top of that color bar over there this area, you can see from the reference photo, gets quite dark. There's a quite a bit more color down here. It's a beautiful orange, like almost a coral color. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with a slightly smaller brush. So I'm going to start to enhance that color, right? I'm going to use some of the color that we already have here and just go back on top of this. And I, I'll tell you, the colors that I've mixed into this on my palette are, and this is this isn't going to be the only bit of color we throw on here. We'll we'll come back and I'm sure we'll have to do at least one more layer on top of this. So don't fret about that. But the colors that I've been using here are uh, organic, organic vermilion. A touch of pyrol scarlet. Let's see, I'm going to come up like this. And then it looked like there was some magenta mixed in with this. And I'm going to, just, just with a damp brush, just blend this up so I don't have any kind of a hard edge here. I don't want a hard edge at all. If this, if this paint is going to flow up at all, it's going to have a long way to go, and it's going to end up with a nice, smooth area down here. Actually, give me some of this, give me some of this opera pink in here. Come on, there, a little bit of this beautiful opera. Let's darken this up just. Let's add a little bit more right in here. Shoot, I'm going to pull this right up. Right up like this. Say again, I, I don't know, I, I throw again into a lot, but this is, this is an area where um, I, I want to have the richness of color, but and I also think that I can start to affect this painting in a in a way that it's going to start to shape up the way I want it to and the way I'm going to start that is right here and if this isn't going to come out exactly the way that my reference photo over there comes out totally fine with that totally fine I'm not trying to duplicate that I'm trying to trying to pay homage to that picture but change it and make it my own Right, so I have a little bit of color on, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here. As soon as, I, as soon as I'm done manipulating this paint, just a touch. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this way out. Come on, way, way, way out. Good, 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 good. I'm just gonna sing and paint to myself. You guys carry on. Okay, cool. Cad, orange, cad, red, vermilion, and a little caramel. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Liza, you're... 
you guys are talking colors and I'm just uh, I'm just sitting here painting away so this is what I'm talking about this whole area from here basically on around I don't know if you can see is wet but I can start to add some darkness back here where the neck and the body um, come apart right by adding this color back here I'm now pushing the body of the bird back and pulling the the neck forward a little bit so without actually painting that in I'm just giving a suggestion of that a little bit and we're gonna have a darker shadow right you can see the shadow on that reference photo that'll come into play and take care of a lot of the rest of this but down in this area if we don't if our shadow doesn't make it down here we don't need it because we've got that that cool color right there let's see um Natalie now this is you don't own Lucas but um Jerry's carries them <laughs> you Natalie you have enough paint for future generations I do too I love paint uh I am thinking about buying some new brushes too <laughs> which if I do I'll be sure to show you all let's see I pulled out all my pinks for the flamingo painting and never used a single pink oh <laughs> Um, oh, that's where we got. Okay, I love the colors in your reference photo, Michael. It's a little different. He has a lot of oranges in that reference photo. And I think that was pretty cool. Um, you know, we, we all just think flamingos and immediately we think pink. I got a little something on my brush there. I blame that on the uh, lawn ornamentation people that we all think of flamingos as pink. Uh, but it's true, right? If you go to a zoo, there's uh, there are quite a bit of pink in flamingos. But depending upon their diet, it's not necessarily all pink. There's quite a bit of orange in them or coral or what you know whatever color we're talking about. It's a lot of different colors there. So I saw that reference photo. And I believe I got that from Pixabay anybody uses pixabay for references um and once i saw it i was like okay i can't i can't pass that one up i can't i gotta use that it was too good so that's where i got my reference photo from okay all right a little bit around his head here we'll come back and do quite a bit more up there but we're starting to build some depth and some um, differentiation here let's see I'm gonna move I'm gonna move down here for the moment this is pretty dark most of this under here is pretty dark so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can't mix in some of this what is this let's take a look at this Cornacrone Burnt Scarlet. I'm going to use some of this with some of the other colors. I don't want a cold shadow, but I do want a, a bit of a darker area in here. So let's see if we can't get a couple of these colors. This, what is this? This is magenta. It's got a little bit of blue in it. But we should be able to put on... An area here. That's quite a bit darker, but not too far outside of the color range for the rest of this painting because we're mixing in, um, especially that vermilion into here. And if I can just not touch the other color, there we go. We can. can do this without without getting any back runs which is always a good thing let's see something like
I'm gonna say something like that starts our shadow down underneath. Oh well, let's see. I'm gonna go just like that. That's my shadow over there. Probably shouldn't paint any of that in yet, but I'm going to paint a little bit of it in. <laughs> Let's see, Natalie says, you loved seeing the challenge of painting on Discord. Great participation. So true. When I started doing that, I was like, okay, I don't know if anybody's going to do it, uh, but I love the fact that everybody's jumping in, or a number of people anyways. I don't expect everybody to do it. It's not for everybody. But the people who did do it, I love that you've jumped in. I love that you've made the paintings yours. And some of them are pretty fantastic. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it. <laughs> I liked a couple of them better than, <laughs> better than some of the paintings that I've done. So um, that's they're fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let's see. So Sherry, yes, me too. I have some huge color charts. Um, let's see. See, Natalie used permanent rose and permanent alizarin crimson in there. Fantastic. Susie and Sherry, you guys both put uh, paintings in Discord. Did you not? They were both one. Oh, I think so. Sherry, I know you did. Let's see. Sherry, I'll use only light red and quinacrone rose. See, you guys are, you guys are better at this than me. <laughs> I don't like you guys are better at it than me. <laughs> Actually, I do. Actually, I do. All right. Um, so here's what I'm going to do right now. I want to I want to start differentiating some feathers here. And I'm trying to try to do it with a little bit of negative painting. That might have got a little bit big. And. I'm gonna do it like this. Like I said, we're gonna try to do a little bit of negative painting. We need to go back in and and re-add um, some more color into this in a little bit. I'm okay with that. Totally okay with that. I think we can get. A little bit of color in here without or a little bit of uh, feathered I'm gonna call it feather definition how's that feather definition in here without doing too too much with a little luck some of these areas will kind of come alive with this color Oh, I think I'm going to, I think that, I was going to say, I think that's going to bleed into there. Let's see, let's put a little bit more. This will work. This will work just fine. So I should say, Susie, Michelle, you struggle with communication on Discord, but I have managed to post a photo. Yeah, Discord isn't always the most intuitive. It's not the most straightforward. Um, there are issues with it, but for those of you who have given it a try, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad you stuck with it, and uh, I hope you're getting something out of it. I'm hoping to do a little bit more with it uh, coming up, but uh, but it is not the most intuitive. If If everybody who's here... Um, could go back in time, uh, like 20 years, uh, and be younger, it would probably be a lot easier. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just going to tell you, it would be a lot easier. Let's see, I'm going to try to do something similar here. Discord is just, it's an easy way to communicate uh, among people. 
and um, it's it's got a nice repository for things and a little bit of history uh, that you can keep on there so if if we want to talk about paintings or paint or anything like that you only go to my discord Ooh, probably not the best um, version of discord out there all right so here's a bit of shadow on the neck here I'm gonna take I'm just gonna pull this way down and let's see what this looks like I'm gonna take this actually I'm gonna take this all the way across I'm gonna do a little bit on this side too let's do a little bit over here and this should sometimes I feel <laughs> feel like I get carried away into painting sometimes. Look at this guy, though. Look at this guy. Swoop right up there. Well, that got a little too... It's dried a little too quickly. I got a little bloom. So we can add a little water with a little bit of color. It'll take that right away. Is his neck kind of taking shape here? A little bit, right? It's getting there. It's a little bit of color on his neck. This is where I'm struggle with these colors a little bit. I feel as though I have to put more water into them than I'm used to. I want to add a little bit, a little extra pop of color on the top of his head over here. I'm just going to go almost, almost straight opera. Just a little bit of that magenta in there. I want him to have a nice pop of color. Ooh. Come on, blend all out. Oh, yeah, it's a little, it's a little bright. I'm gonna just dull it a little bit. I like it. I like, I like it. I don't love it. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Let me give a. Actually, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to fix my mistake here. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, you guys. Um. Alan is here. Wow, Alan, welcome. Alan, you you used to be here all the time. Welcome back. Glad to see you. <laughs> I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to what y'all are saying here in just a second. Give me a second here. Trying to, I'm trying to get that tide line out a little bit without. Without kind of ruining uh, everything and taking too much paint off. OK, all right. Oh, his head's starting to look pretty cool. OK. Oh, and I did. I touched. Oh, I, it was just barely wet here, and I touched it. Sudike, let's see. Sudike said something. Discord was designed for young folks, not old folks. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, my uh, Susie says, Sudike, really? My grandson was impressed I had Discord app on my phone. <laughs> I like that Discord is private and it's just us in there that's true uh, uh it is a pretty private uh channel so not a lot of people that you don't want to get in there get in there 
Let's see, Alan is here. Susie, uh, they already think I'm a crazy old lady. <laughs> Lots of said everybody hit the thumbs up button. Thank you all. Anybody who's hit the thumbs up and given a like, thank you so much. I totally appreciate that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Sherry got in and she's 71. <laughs> it's fantastic. Alan says, yeah, uh, ever since I started my business, I've been really busy. Um, wow. Alan, you want to talk about your business? You want to, you want to pump it up a little bit? Give it a shot. Go for it. I let everybody say a little bit about what they want. So if it's anything we can all join in and help out with, Sherry, you give me courage. Sherry, that's fantastic, actually. I... I was going to say, I'm, I'm planning on still be doing and still... Ugh. Actually, what I'm, I guess what I'm not planning on doing is talking normally, but I'm planning on still being able to do uh, this kind of stuff at 71. I don't think 71 is that old. I think 71 is right where you need to be. Okay, let's see. I, I'm going to try to paint some of this shadow behind the neck here. This will help it really stand out, or at least I hope it'll help it really stand out. And I know we've got a little shadow on this side. This side back here is a little easier because we don't have to do too much with it. It's, it is pretty much what it is, but this side over here, we do need to do a little bit with. So very, very slightly damp brush i'm just i i don't like hard edges all that much so i'm gonna just knock it down a little bit if i can if i can't i'm gonna just gonna ruin the whole painting by <laughs> by trying it <laughs> no it'll the paint will play nicely eventually eventually let's see it looks like Michelle just got into the discord server I just got a, a pop-up about that that's fantastic Michelle thanks for joining there's a little bit of content there not quite as much as I had hoped to have there at this point in time but there's a little bit there i'm planning on adding a bit more and doing a bit more with it uh, i'm also planning on doing more with the my, with my newsletter whoa now i'm all fuzzy uh, that I send out from my website. If anybody subscribes to that, I've pretty much gotten um, settled in at my work. I, I think you all know I went went through a lot of changes at work three years ago. I went through a lot of changes at work uh, this past year. I'm coming to a point where things are settling down either one way or another for me and that's going to allow me a little bit more time to devote to uh, doing watercolors, whatever the disposition of, of my job is. Um, I'm going to have more time for watercolors, which means I'm going to have more time for my website. It means I'm going to have more time for... Uh, content creation. I'm going to have more time for a lot of different things. And so I'm, I'm hoping to get back into doing all of those things. And I hope uh, you all are going to join me for some of that. Maybe some of you will join me for all of it and some of you won't join me for any of it. And that's okay too. Um, it's, it's fun to do sometimes. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, but I, I do want to get I, I do want to get to do a bit more of of all of that and to uh, give back a little bit more than I've been able to in the past um, well a couple of years anyway so there will be some of that coming up and Michelle you jumped in um, I hope if nothing else you get in on some of the challenges that we have in there. Liza says, great. I think it's going to be fun. I want to do some more inclusive things. I'm trying to figure out how to um, do a little bit of a giveaway on here. I don't know what the best way to do that is. There are, you know, I've got a few ideas of things I would like to do. We'll figure it out, or I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together, somehow, some way. Um, but I want to keep everybody involved and uh, figure out some ways that are fair and fun. So we'll see how we'll see how that all progresses. Let's see. I'm just drawing a few lines in here. I, I don't, actually, I'm not sure I need, I'm not sure I need too much more color down here. Actually, I think I want a little bit stronger color in this part. Um, Sherry says, you were going through the same thing at work, a lot of ongoing changes. <laughs> I'm glad I retired two years ago. Uh, I, uh, I'm a ways from, well, actually, I'm not that far from retiring. I can retire in two years if I want to. I've been at my job a long time. I don't know if I want to. I like my job. <laughs> I, I love my job. I love my job. I love my coworkers. I'm not sure if I want to retire. I'm one of those weird people. I love going into work and spending time with my teammates uh, and helping the people that I do, um, I, I, I love it. Sometimes it's frustrating, but more often than not, it it's it's fun and it, it rewarding. And when you get to help somebody and you do a good job, it, it really it really a reward for itself. So I don't know I don't know if I want to. Um, uh, retire anytime soon, but I'm, I'm, I told my boss, <laughs> I said, I could get out of here in two years. <laughs> He's like, uh, nope, nope, not accepting that resignation. Just stop thinking about it now. <laughs> like, ah, what do you mean? Let's see, Alan, what did Alan say? I started a detailing business, detailing cars, trucks, vans, boats, any kind of vehicle. Wow. It took a while to build, and now I do mobile detailing. That's fantastic. Wow, that's great. Uh, Suzuki says, you're a, Suzuki says, Cinco de Mayo birthday. When When is yours? Um, I'm, uh, Suzuki, I'm not sure you're asking. If you're asking mine, mine's coming up in, in my birthday's in April. Mine's coming up. <laughs> Michael, I still, I do, I have, I do have kids that still need to go through college. Uh, one will not be going to college, I don't believe. Um, doesn't want to, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I, I think he's found something right now that he has an interest in, and if he's going to pursue it, I'm totally fine with him pursuing that. Um, there might be some college level courses that he will need to take, but I don't think college, traditional college, uh, is in his, uh, future or near future anyways. You know, he's, he's a teenager, so things may change. Uh, but right now I don't think so. And that's totally fine. Like I said, I think he's got a plan going forward which I fully endorse. 
Um, the, the, my other one in the house here, I think he's going to be going to college. I'd be shocked if he didn't end up at a college somewhere. I'd be very shocked. Um, the good thing for me, <laughs> the good thing for me is that I work at a college. So as long as I continue to work at a college and my children want to go to a, an affiliated school, then they're going to get a reduced tuition, which would make their father quite happy. <laughs> yeah, you had, okay, so Natalie, you had one that did a uh, trade school and one that did a college education and and I bet they're both still turned out wonderful. I, I, I don't know, I get, I don't, I'm not, I'm not really jaded about it, but um, it bothers me sometimes when, even even when I'm at, right, the, the university that I work at, people are like going, oh, uh, university is the only way you, you can go. You have to, you know, you have to do this. And I'm like, no, 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 hold on a minute, hold on a minute. There's a whole America out there that, doesn't have a college degree, doesn't want a college degree, and they still do fantastic on their own. So let's not, let's please not pigeonhole anybody uh, quite yet. Plus the other side is, we're talking teenagers here. So <laughs> we're talking teenagers. Oh, okay. So I can, I'm liking where this guy's going right now. Got some interesting shape, some interesting color on him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I want to divide these two areas. So I'm gonna put a little color up here. Yeah, I'm liking where this is going. This is kind, of, this is looking kind of interesting to me. There we go. This is pooled a little bit. I don't want this to pool, really. Let me pull a little bit of that off. Oh, he's looking interesting. I look, I'm looking up here. He's looking interesting. It's not what I thought in my mind when I started this, it was gonna look like. But you know what? That's kind of the fun of some of these is seeing where it's gonna go to. I'm gonna do a really quick glaze over top of this. Uh oh with a little bit of this pink maybe a little bit of orange in here just a quick glaze to add a little bit of extra color in here I like it. <laughs> I'm liking it. My son this this morning, yesterday, saw a picture. Oh, you know what? It was this morning. I was at my mother-in-law's house, and I had painted some birthday cards for her, and she framed them and and hung them up in her house. Yeah, it's totally fine, right? And my son was over there, looked at him, and went, your painting has really changed in the past couple of years. I went, well, the the one you're looking at was a much more stylized uh, painting uh, that I did. It was a it was a cat. It was much more stylized than I would paint now. But yeah, my paintings changed. Um, and I and I I look at things every now and again and I start to recognize it. And this one I'm I, I'm recognizing. This is totally different than I would have done a couple of years ago. Let's see. Um, let's see. We had our doubts about the younger one. He's a wonderful grown man now, Natalie. That's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. I always I, 
it's always difficult and and i had my own struggles too everybody has to find their own way and we all take slightly different paths and we and everybody else thinks they know the path that we ought to take and sometimes people are right we probably should have taken a different path but we always find out usually always find out the path that we needed to take and whatever we get we're we go we go down that path let's see both of my boys started at junior college because they couldn't figure out what they wanted to do oldest son ended up transferring to uc santa cruz cool the others at art institute in san francisco wow that's fantastic um let's see Suzuki says michael if you were replicating the photo how would you handle the shadows color wise uh so how would i handle the photo if uh, if i would okay so i guess what i would do this down here would be all a warm this all this down here all this back here this would all be a warm gray color right this up here would be a cool, come on, focus in here. This up here would be much more of a cool gray, a cool gray here and warmer as it came down, warmer, warmer, warmer. And the same thing up here, this would be cool. In fact, I'm gonna put a little bit more something underneath here. This isn't right to me. I wanted a harder shadow under here. Right, I'll just paint, do a little bit of negative painting, get a couple of feathers in there. Cold, colder up here, a little bluer, and then as it comes down, it gets a little bit more light, then it gets much warmer, much warmer, much warmer. We have, oh, we have 16 here tonight. Woo, 16 or 17 people watching. Fantastic. That means we've got some new people. <laughs> um so anybody who's new we've got 16 17 people i guess there's a possibility that <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't tell anybody i'm, I'm on vacation right now <laughs> i'm at home it's a staycation my, my mother came into town to see the kids uh the grandkids and my, my you know myself and my wife i suppose to a lesser extent uh, but a couple of those might be <laughs> views from in my own house. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anything's possible. Let's see. Let's give a little extra on here. I'm going to sharpen this up over here. Gonna go like this a little bit, and then we're and then we're gonna get into doing his beak. Is it a beak or a bill? Do we know? He sifts things through it, right? So it could be a bill. But I thought bills were only for waterfowl, so that would tell me it's a beak. But I'm not sure. Uh-oh, Patty's got to go, Patty. <laughs> thank you for stopping by while you were able to, Patty. Thank you. I hope you're able to stop back again at some point in time. Thank you for participating. Thank you for uh, helping to make my Wednesdays uh, so enjoyable. Love my Wednesday stream. Give a little bit of color back here. So this is not turning out anything like my reference photo, and I'm totally fine with that. I do think it's turned out pretty cool. You guys are seeing some different numbers over there, and that's a little weird. I see currently 18, which I think is a fantastic number and i will be honest with you <laughs> get 
you get a few more than 18 and everybody starts to say something and it gets quite difficult <laughs> it's it's hard at 10 sometimes um and it's hard at 18 to to keep track of what people are saying look at him look at this guy let's get some brighter <laughs> Liza says, I'm taking creative license. I am taking creative license. I know you all have heard me say it. I'm not trying to duplicate what I see. I'm trying to pay homage to it and make a good uh, representation of it. Make my own good version of it. Little artistic license never hurt anybody. Look, I like it. I like his head here. I like it. <laughs> I need a little bit. I'm going to warm him up right through here. Just a little bit of this um, vermilion. Come on, a little bit of this vermilion here. Should help to warm him up just a little bit. Gotten cold in a couple of spots. Well, I'm not sure that did too much. But it certainly didn't hurt. Oh, you know what we... Okay, so... I want to do this. Give me give me some of this blue. You know what? Let's, give, let's use this moon glow. Oh, this is one thing I didn't really think about. <laughs> I've got this dark almost black beak here but I'm not sure what I need to do with <laughs> 22 21 woo we love the growth <laughs> I do love the growth anybody who's here uh first of all thank you stop and say hi love talking to people love hearing where you're from what you're up to what your experience with watercolors is. If it's none, that's cool too. If you just like watercolors, if you just like to hear somebody talk. <laughs> Mary Ellen is here. Just remember that the, the viewers of your art don't see the reference photo. Wait, they should. It's here. Oh, the viewers of my art, like when, it, when it's hanging up somewhere, yeah, they don't see the reference photo. So I can make it look kind of like anything I want because there won't be a comparison when, when it's hanging on a wall somewhere. All right, I've got a, I, you, I don't know if you all can see. I've got some blues and some purples in here. We're going to come back and we'll, oh, it, you can tell. <laughs> We're going to do some other colors on top of this. Maybe we'll do it right about now. I'm, let me uh, try to figure out what this color is. This is a darker color. That might be a, some kind of black. Well, we'll let these colors sit in there just a little bit. I don't want to think about what I'm doing with the rest of the body of this guy a little bit. Actually, let's let's take a look at his legs here. He needs a couple of legs, I think, right? He must. He can't have no legs. He's got to have legs. I've got this green over here. If I put some red in, in it, it should uh, brown or gray up a little bit. going to use that as his legs here one there and one back here I'll tell you what I'm going to drop a little bit of extra blue in this 
his leg back here. Come on. And as long as this is wet, I can I can adjust this pretty much however I want. I just need to make sure that it stays wet. Because as soon as it starts to dry up, then I lose the ability. To adjust that color Michael what do I love to paint most Liza I love that you asked that question actually I'll, I'll, I'm gonna say I'm gonna well I'm gonna answer by saying what I love to paint the most and what I want to love to paint the most <laughs> I love painting birds I think painting birds is always going to be my first true love in watercolor painting whoops there we go you can see it now i don't always think i do the best job in painting birds and i don't necessarily think that that always matters but i love painting birds i like the organic nature of them right you've got these you've got these kind of almost prehistoric uh animals walking around and they've got this lovely arches and then they've got some straight points on them and they've got all of these different interesting areas right circles arches straight lines um, um, triangles they've got all the all of the all of the that was a thalo. That was not what I wanted. <laughs> All of the shapes that you might want to paint anywhere else, right? They've got it on their body and they, and they carry it around effortlessly. And I think it's just kind of a cool look. And whether it's a bird that's just sitting there, or whether it's a bird in motion, they have this cool look to it that I really like. So I love painting birds. First of all, never ever will I get tired of painting birds. Second of all, I, you know, I live by the ocean. I live by the ocean. I see the ocean every day. I can't get away from it. <laughs> I want to be able to paint the ocean. I want to be able to paint a wave. I want to be able to paint, um, you know, the shoreline and water around the shoreline. It just, to me, feels like I have trouble doing that. And so, but I really, I really want to be able to do that or do that better, I guess, is maybe what I should say. Um, and so I, every day when I go out and I look at the waves, I look at the water, I'm always looking to try and figure out, okay, what does this really look like? What are the shapes involved here? How does the wave move? Where's the white and where's the color in there? And honestly i think it has eluded me up to this point i think i'm terrible at painting water i can't <laughs> i i want to be able to paint water and i want to be able to paint water really well i just haven't figured it out yet i'm going to i'll get it figured out some way somehow someday i'm gonna get it but i'm not there yet so um, you know, birds are what I love to paint. Water is what I really want to paint, uh, but feel like I don't, I don't do nearly as good a job with water as I should do. I hope that <laughs> let's work on water next week. <laughs> um, yeah, we might. <laughs> I do. I, I, you know, I don't have any reason not to tell you what I'm struggling with. I've struggled with water since I've ever started. And and it's always been funny to me 
that it's a water medium. The main thing you use for your painting is water. And the one thing that I have struggled with the most is water. So I, I totally think it's, uh, I totally think it's funny. I'm fine with doing some water next week. I, I'm all for trying. Does anybody else have trouble painting water? I can't do water worth a dang either. <laughs> it is irony. It's total irony. It's the painting gods coming back and laughing at me, going, ah, ha, ha, take that. All right, I got some nice color on this guy here. All right, his beak, covered up his beak a little bit, some dark. There's a little bit of blue underneath there. I actually like the color underneath. I'm okay with that. We got this big body here, right? This big area. We have some interest in a couple of these areas here. Right, a couple of these areas that have a little bit of interest to them. Just putting in a little bit of feathers here. Uh, but we need to do something else with the center of this. We can't leave that blank. We can't leave that vacant. We have to do something. So uh, here was here's my thought. And this is how I thought most of the feathers were going to go on this whole thing. <laughs> Mary Ellen agreed. <laughs> reflections in water difficult. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, reflections in water. Uh, at one point, I thought I could do reflections, and then I painted a second painting, and they looked terrible. <laughs> uh, you know what? Someday we'll all get it. We'll all figure it out. Someday, not Sunday, someday, we'll get it. Let's see, I want to paint. I want this to be a little darker through here. This seems like it lightened up a little bit. Just come on, work with me here. Another layer on top. I'm okay with lots of layers. I've become okay with lots of layers. Let me say it that way. I don't know if I ever told you guys the story. When I started painting, oh, lo, these many years. <laughs> Sherry, you like painting water. All right, Sherry's not allowed back in here anymore. That's no, no. You like painting water, but you think you have to be looking at it. That's interesting. Um, would that that were true. <laughs> if I could paint it by looking at it, I'd be happy. I can't paint it by looking at it. I can't. I don't think it's the water itself. I, I, I think the problem is water has too much going on. Right, so listen, hear me out here. If I go down to the beach and I go to paint some water, which is all well and good, there's nothing wrong with painting water at the beach, right? The waves coming and lapping up onto the shore and whatnot, all well and good. But you can't just paint the water and you can't just paint the shore. Right, right here I can paint a bird, and the bird is a bird. But if you go to paint water, especially at the shore, you're not just painting water at the shore. You're painting the water at the shore, plus you're painting the water as it's coming over the sand on the beach, and plus you're painting the foam or not painting the foam. And then you've got the different depths of water, which require different colors of paint um, and there's just so much going on with water that it makes it incredibly difficult and I think I just haven't figured out what all of those elements are in there and I think if I ever figure out what all those elements are then I'll have a handle on being able to paint the water Ooh, I like this I like this color down here now Actually, I like his, <laughs> I like his forehead up here. I think that's pretty good. I like the color down here. It was a little dark before. This color seems to have lightened this up a little bit, 
And again, we get that nice long neck that comes all the way down there. Lovely. Uh, you have a, Liza, your brother lives on a lake and it changes every second. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, Sherry, <laughs> the hard part is the sun and the wind changes so much hard to capture even in, oh, yeah, yeah. Water's, let's just, let's just agree, water's tough. <laughs> water's hard. There's no doubt about it that water is hard. I want to bring his eye out a little bit more. I'm going to brighten this up a little, a little bit. I don't know if, how much that's going to bring it out, but a little bit of cold yellow out there. Okay, and so this is what I was saying before. Um, I had planned, if you, look at, if you look at the reference photo here, if you go over to Discord, you can see it. Um, instead of painting the, the feathers in a negative pattern like I did with these down here, right? I painted everything that wasn't necessarily the feather. I think um, what I'm going to do on the, uh, the body of this is do some positive uh, feathers, right? Such that the tip of the feather has the most color on it and then we pull it out a little bit and whoop and let's see if, if I do one like this right do a feather like this I should be able to pull this way out and we just end up seeing the tip of that feather just like that, and I probably do a number of them around here. Let's see if I can get a couple of them in a row, and that should give some texture. <laughs> Liza, you still struggle with skies. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one too. Skies are not easy. Um, I, I have sat down to try to do lots of skies, lots of skies. Sometimes I manage to get a sky that's actually pretty good. But I'm willing to sit in and put some time on skies. <laughs> Sometimes with water, not so much. Not always so much. Okay, I got a couple of these on here. You can see the kind of, I kind of want them to blend down to almost nothing, but it's starting to get some texture on there, right? <laughs> I said, who are you kidding? You struggle, but you like a challenge. Um, it's not... Uh, yeah, I, I can do passable stuff, but, you know, there's some things that are just not not in my wheelhouse. And like I said, that's fine. Not, every, not everybody has to be good at everything. Oils are challenge play as opposed to water colors. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Actually, I was down at the waterfront um, yesterday morning. In my little my little town here, I was down at the waterfront. And somebody was painting down there with her um, little tiny canvas, little tiny uh, oil paints, <laughs> and I I I wasn't paying attention. I walked past and and saw her, and I was like, "Oh, this is somebody's painting. No big deal." And then I was like, "Oh." I so want to go and see what she's doing. <laughs> I'm like, I really got to see what she's painting. But I couldn't, I couldn't go back. I'm like, I, it bothers me when people do it to me. I'm not going to do that to anybody else. I'm just going to let her paint her painting and enjoy her time. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't go and bother her. I didn't go and talk to her. <laughs> Sherry, you, you, Sherry, you said you like painting it. You didn't say you're good at it. I'm sure, Sherry, I'm sure you're good at it. 
I I have no doubt you're good at it. If if I inferred differently, I didn't. I'm just having a little fun. I'm just putting a few lines on here, so we know kind of where these the direction these feathers are going. A line here and a line here. That's just going to give some general featherage on here without doing too much. And again, I'm trying not to be too particular about where these go to. I don't want them to look too random or too. I do want them to look random. Kind of like I kind of like these uh, positive painted feathers here. It's kind of an interesting little deal. I get one here and here. Not quite dry enough, but I think it'll be fine. Kind of interesting. See if we get another one here and I don't know. Here, maybe that one's got a friend right there. I just want to make sure these are going in the right direction to indicate kind of the overall shape of this bird. Right, if we keep them all pointed, going flowing around the body here, I think we're doing a good job. One here, there's maybe something here. Let's strengthen this one. Let's put one here, and then maybe a couple of marks, just a couple of marks after this. This is an interesting way to do this. All right. We need to add any more color in here. How's our beak looking? Our beak is looking okay. Oh, I think he's I think he's kind of turning out cool. I can't whoop, I still got a big blob here. I can't put any anything on his eye there. Let's see. Really like the way you handled the feathers on the body. These ones here that are coming up around, they, it kind of gives it a little interest, right? Um, I was at the beach one day and had a great conversation with an artist. He had done a beautiful seascape in oils. I have to, he was worried about the bugs. He said, no, he, he'd pick them off later. Oh, nice. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I have to tell you, my neighbor has a bird bath, and I know, thanks to them, the the very last the very last day of fall, they all gather in, at the bird bath. It's like they're saying goodbye. See you in the spring. <laughs> they all gather there and pay their respects. Actually, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to, I'm not going to do any, yeah, I don't know, do I want to, okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to try this. Uh, I don't know what color this is, right, it looks blackish to me. I'm going to try to see if we can give a little bit of differentiation on part of this. Um, beak. 
like this before I put a couple of highlights on it. And then I think, I think we're doing good for time. I'll put a little background on this guy too, right? He's got like a nostril here. I knew that. It's not a nostril, but I've drawn it on, so I'm going to paint something on there. There we go. I like, I, do you guys like the way this look? I like the way this is looking. <laughs> Sherry, you were painting eagles, but got the sidetracked. They're sitting on a perch on the bench with a beautiful sky and ocean. Wow, that's awesome. I was starting to paint a kestrel the other day. Look, there he is, and got distracted. I got one little layer of paint on them. I got called out of the studio. I hope you finish it. You should finish it. Let's do this. I'm going to... This needs... This, this needs something back here. I'm just going to... paint a little something here I'm not even too worried about what this is is there a couple of a couple of feathers or something there all right uh, and a background right um, do to do I probably you took creative license there you go everybody gets creative license tonight on me I'll pay for it. I think. I was thinking I should do green back there, but I'm not sure I want green. What do you think? Should I do a green background or a blue background? Green would make it pop a bit more, but it could also make it look a bit funky. So I was going to do my normal background and like make blue in this general area here. I've got this wonderful, this looks like cerulean blue. Yes, yeah, cerulean blue. I think I'm going to do that. Let's do this. Normal way. I'm going to wet the paper. Plus, this, this will help me. Paint it over the lines here in a couple of places. This might help me fix that just a little bit. Blue, green. I don't want blue. I don't want green. I'm going to settle for blue, green. I don't. Yeah, I do. I have some good greens here. Let's see. Come on. Drop this in. It's a little wet out here. Whoop, I don't want that pink in there. It's a little wet out here. I think we're going to be good with it. And then, Mr. Blue, you can go wherever you want to here. Just run around, have fun. So I go a little, I should probably go a little bit more than that, right? A little bit more, come on out a little bit more. I don't know these backgrounds <laughs> I know they're really simple and they're not really uh, yes it is cerulean blue they're not really complex but they do they add they add a bit of fun and frivolity to the painting right they give it a nice a nice look i going to do some over here. Let's get that all nice and wet. And let's start adding some of this beautiful cerulean blue. Let's 
going to help him stand out a little bit. And I have to... Well, I don't like I don't like the way this looks. <laughs> That's a it's a nice pop. There you go. That's a good way to say it. It's nothing special about a background like this, but it adds a nice little pop of of, of color and helps it helps it pop off the page, just that little bit, right? Just that little bit. Whimsy. That's a great word too. I like the, I actually like that better. Adds a little bit of whimsy to it. I'm not even sure what you call this background. Right now, I know what breaking the box is. Right, if I paint something and then make a box behind it, but it, it sticks out over the sides, that's called breaking the box. I know what that is. I don't know what this is, but it, it adds some fun to it. There, there we go. Let's add a little bit more up here. Something. I'm just trying to get my edges, you know, from what I imagine the edges to match up a little bit. If I get a little too much color, that's fine. If I get a little too little color, that's fine. Oh, yeah, look, now he pops right off the page. He totally pops off the page. <laughs> I got to Oh, I got to We've got to. We've still got a little work to do here. How many people are still with me? 15 people. That's a great number. What brushes are you using? I used... Now the Martini brushes last time I painted and remember them being awesome brushes. Um, yeah, I do. Actually, I have a number of my Martini brushes in my uh, travel kit and I use them there. These brushes, uh, Alan, I bought from an ad I saw. Let me get a big one so you can see it. I'll show you again. Um, these are King Art brushes, right? And I don't get any, I don't get anything for this. There you go. That's better. King Art. Um, you can go to kingart.com. I bought these are the 9020 series brushes, which are the pointed rounds. They have some, I don't know. They're not flat rounds. They're just not pointed rounds. They, they don't come to nearly as sharp a point. Uh, these ones come to a really nice point. They're a synthetic bristle, and you know I, I bought a whole set of them uh, of eight for I don't know forty bucks or something like that. And then I just broke them out, um, so I have two sets now. So I have these four, and then I have the alternating size, uh, like one number bigger or whatever. So I basically have two sets of these. And I've been using these for uh, about two years now. I'm totally happy with them. They've outperformed my um, expectations of them. I think they're wonderful uh, brushes. And if anybody wants to, they can go to kingart.com and, and grab a set of them. Like I said, these are the 9020 series brushes. We all love a good point. They're fantastic brushes. Um, and I, I, I didn't expect to, to like them all that much, quite honestly. No, that's not true. I didn't expect them to hold up this well. I didn't buy them thinking I'm going to hate them. I just didn't expect that they would hold up as well as they did. But I'm totally happy that they have. Um, and I don't know what else to say about them. I just give a little, a little bit of uh, shine on the, on his beak there. All right.
and trying to think what else we need to do with this okay whoop let me get him in frame there I guess is the first thing so that of course is my reference photo and so I, I'm to the point now I should, I should I should do this I should sign him so we all know I'm I'm roughly done awesome there we go I'm roughly done uh, let's talk about some good and some bad here. Um, ho, Squadiel Dada MJ. I'm sorry I butchered your name, <laughs> but welcome. You came a little late. I'm glad you came. Uh, next week, we're doing back here at the same time at 7 Pacific every Wednesday. I'm just to the point where I, I go through and, and do a little self-evaluation of the things I like and the things I don't like so much, the things I would do a little bit differently. Let's see. His head and beak need accentuation. His head and beak need accentuation. Do they? It's a little light here. So this is what, this is what I think. Um... I think that if if there was a color here, there would be no issue about anything with his beak. And maybe we, we should go back and add some of this blue here. I need to let it dry a little bit. But I think if there's a little blue behind it, his beak is going to pop up this way. And you'll see a little bit. Uh, I wish I had taken that picture and tilted his head down a little bit more. right? So that his beak actually came in front of his neck. I think it would have been a little better picture if his beak had been in front of his neck. And it doesn't need to be a lot. It could have just been like halfway. And that would have, with the perspective, it would have pulled his head forward and his neck back and his body back even further. Right now, this area is the only area that shows you that his head is in front of his neck. And then this whole area shows the neck in front of his body. But I, if I had had his beak cross his neck, it would have added that extra layer of depth. Um, and if I were to do this again, I think I would do that. I would just tweak where his head is at that little bit. Just give it a burp, <laughs> right? And I think that would have made it an even uh, stronger visual. It would have made it even stronger. Right, some of the things I like, I, I really like his, what I'm going to call his forehead up here, right? I like the shading around there. It adds a bit of depth to his whole forehead. I like his, his, uh, his chin, <laughs> his jawline. I'm not sure exactly what we call this down here. Maybe I could add a little extra color here and tighten that up a little bit. Right, I love this area down here, right? I like that there's this definite split here so that you know this is in front of that. And this adds a nice bit of texture without doing too much. This probably pays homage to the original reference photo over there more than anything else on this um, painting. And I love this kind of... Whoop, this kind of turned into a happy mess over here, right? I got these feathers that are coming from underneath, and these ones go up, and these ones come down. And we got this, if you just glance at it, you go, oh, well, there's the feathers are all coming together right there. Uh, only if you stop and stare at it do you look and go, well, that's just a bunch of lines that kind of come together. Um, and that's not really on our uh, on our original picture over there either, but it came together that way. And then we do have this... While this shadow, this dark, doesn't really match this, you can definitely tell that that's pushed back, right? These legs are pushed back, and his his chest here, his where his neck is, is definitely forward of that, even though we've got a dark and a dark area down here. Uh, so some there are some things to really like about this. Let's do this. It looks like this is just dry enough. I think if we put some of that blue here, We don't need too, too much. I think that that would, 
alleviate some of the issues with his neck not quite looking right. Come on, come back and focus. There you go. And so now you can see, now there's a clear outline of his beak there. And you can see it, it, it pushes the whole thing. His beak now comes forward a little bit like that. Um, I'm not wild about his, the black over here. It's a little, it, it you can see it got a little granular there. That was from the moon glow that I used, but I don't, <laughs> I'm, it's not even listed here. I, I do have a dark down in this corner. Um, that's a mystery dark. And I think I'm going to have to figure out what that is and put it on, put it on here. Um, <laughs> to know what it is uh, but maybe I should have just used that I, I was hoping to get a little blue or a little different color in there also you know they this is not white up here this is this has got some nice purple in it and a, and a little blue in there I really like that I don't think it comes across as well up there on the on the video as it does on the page it looks really nice on the page so I'm actually pretty happy about that uh, a mystery dark. <laughs> CDK, you really like the, the use of both negative and positive shapes for the feathers. Yeah, that's kind of neat. You don't see, you see a lot of positive shapes in paintings or you see a lot of negative shapes in paintings. You don't always see too many of, of the other in there, at least not in this quantity. Um, yep. Let's see. Oh, Squadio Dada M Squadio Dada MJ. You pronounced you sounded out the name perfectly. Call me MJ. All right, MJ. <laughs> that's uh, this is the part that's so helpful to me. The self critique. I look. Uh, I think the self critique is an important part of most paintings. The only thing I don't want people to do is take themselves uh, too seriously when they do it because. Um, if you do it too much, then you run the risk of forgetting that you're doing it to have fun and enjoy yourself. It's a hobby. I don't think any of us here are doing this for a living. It's a hobby that's fun to do. Um, let's critique, critique ourselves a little bit to see if we can do it a little bit better, but not critique ourselves so hard that we make ourselves feel bad for making some fantastic artwork. Um, but I do, I try to be realistic about my, my paintings and um, talk about them. I think when I can vocalize them for myself, then I can see, then I can definitely see where I fell a little short of what I wanted to do. And I think you guys can see that too. Um, and I don't know, I don't mind it. I, I, use it as a, I use it as a tool to help for the next one. So there we go. Uh, we have a trump. Well, we have trumpeter swans here. I was going to paint a flamingo coming face to face with one of the trumpeter swans and saying, "Well, well what happened to you?" <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but you didn't get the time. Uh, oh, trumpeter swans! They're so mean. <laughs> I'm so sherry. I'm sorry. Swans and geese are mean. I remember being chased around by them as uh, as a small child, um, but I do like them from afar. Okay, that's all I have for this evening. I don't have the next challenge yet. I will have the next challenge up by the end of the week. I'm still thinking about it. I've got a couple of ideas. Um, I don't know what we're going to do next uh, next Wednesday yet. <laughs> that will be announced uh, next week, and we'll figure it all out from there. Ooh. You got pecked by a head once too. Yeah, they're so mean. Um, that's all I have for you guys this evening. Thank you all for joining me on this Wednesday. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to help make my day so much better. I hope I was able to uh, liven up your Wednesday evening a little bit. Um, until next time, 
Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your evening. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you soon. Thank you. And I've got a new ending.